Welcome back, beloved community. It's so good to be back with you today. This week, we're going to take a peek at James as he discusses the foolishness of favoritism. Come, Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth. Set your people free. Come, Holy Spirit, renew your image and love. Heal our humanity. So, beloved community, let's jump right in. We're going to spend some time in James, the second chapter, and we're going to begin with verse one. Let's listen for God's voice to speak to us today. My brothers and sisters, when you show favoritism, you deny the faithfulness of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has been resurrected in glory. Imagine two people are coming into your meeting. One has a gold ring and fine clothes, while the other is poor, dressed in filthy rags. Then suppose that you were to take special notice of the one wearing fine clothes, saying, here's an excellent place. Sit here. But to the poor person, you say, stand over there or here, sit at my feet. Wouldn't you have shown favoritism among yourselves and become evil-minded judges? My dear brothers and sisters, listen. Hasn't God chosen those who are poor by worldly standards to be rich in terms of faith? Hasn't God chosen the poor as heirs of the kingdom that God has promised to those who love God? But you have dishonored the poor. Don't the wealthy make life difficult for you? Aren't they the ones who drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who insult the good name spoken over you at your baptism? You do well when you really fulfill the royal law found in scripture. Love your neighbor as yourself. But when you show favoritism, you are committing a sin and by the same law, you are exposed as a lawbreaker. Anyone who tries to keep all of the law but fails at one point is guilty of failing to keep it all. The one who said don't commit adultery also said don't commit murder. So if you don't commit adultery but do commit murder, you are a lawbreaker. In every way then, speak and act as people who will be judged by the law of freedom. There will be no mercy in judgment for anyone who hasn't shown mercy. For mercy overrules judgment. My brothers and sisters, what good is it if people say they have faith, but do nothing to show it? Claiming to have faith can't save anyone, can it? Imagine a brother or sister who is naked and never have a, has enough food to eat. What if one of you said, go in peace and stay warm, have a nice meal, what good is it if you don't actually give them what their body needs? In the same way, faith is dead when it doesn't result in faithful activity. These are God's words for God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that we hear a message that we still need to hear today. James is speaking to the church. James is speaking to church here and now. Listen to the ways that we have shown favoritism. And if we are to live as the church, as those proclaimed uh, to be resurrected in Christ Jesus, to be called to God as beloved children, to love our neighbors as ourselves, as James reminds us in this text, if we are to do and believe and trust all of that, then our faithfulness needs to be lived out in real and tangible ways. We can't just say that we are the church and we do all of these wonderful things that black lives matter, all lives matter, that we are caring and concerned for the poor and we are working against uh, injustice and we're fighting for justice and we're fighting for liberation. If we don't actually do the work 
of justice, if we don't actually do the work of love and faithfulness, we are acting in foolishness. And this is exactly what James is offering to the community because sometimes his community and particularly ours, we like to, we like to make excuses. We like to be flippant uh, about our responses, about our behavior. So we like to, to, to say, well, I'm doing all of these other things. What, what more do you expect of me? Like I'm doing, I'm doing good things here. See all of the ways that I am, I'm not racist or see all of the ways that I am not prejudiced. See, see all of the ways that I am working towards justice. And we like to bury the things that maybe we need to call more attention to. And James is bringing those to light in this passage as he says, it's, if we're going to live fully faithful lives, if we're going to live in a way that honors our inheritance in Christ Jesus, then that means that we need to honor the fact that everyone has an inheritance in Christ Jesus. That favoritism and having a respect for one person over another is not truly living into the goodness and the belovedness that we have all been created in and for and by God. That if we are to really believe that we must act, that how I engage in the world, how I engage with people in my community that that matters. That if I am denying one person because of what the world says, of because, because I am trying to, as Pastor Chad uh, likes to offer for us in reflection, if we're trying to climb a ladder, we're often pushing other people down to get to the top. And what Jesus offers for us, what James is calling attention to is that's not faithfulness. Faithfulness is saying it's not about me getting to the top, but it's about me creating space for everyone at the table. And that may mean that I might need to take a seat at the floor, that I might need to take a step back so that someone else can take a step forward so that I may need to sit on the floor so someone can sit in a chair. That I may need to push aside my selfish and foolish ways because I want to be fully faithful. I want to be loving. I want to be the person that God truly did create me to be. And in doing so, that requires that I don't show favoritism. That requires that as James offers at the end of our text here, that I can't just say it's cold outside. Wish you well, here's a, here's a jacket. It's great, they obviously need a jacket, but do I have space inside my church that can provide shelter from a wicked and cruel winter? Do I have a church that can provide respite for everyone, housed and not housed? Can I provide a space, an emotional space, a physical space for somebody that may not speak my language? Can I provide a space where we can all feel safe? where we can all feel and truly live out our inherent belovedness. Because that, folks, is true faithfulness. It is faithfulness that does not show favoritism. It is a faithfulness that comes at the work of our God. It is faithfulness that comes at the relationship that we have with Christ Jesus. And it comes at the work of our mouths and our hands and our feet.
because it's not enough to just say it. We have to live it.